Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. Got a good program lined up for you today. Grab yourself a cup of tea. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, if you're a brand new viewer, please don't let it be the last time. And if you're a regular one, we love you, love you, love you. I just, this morning, signed a whole pile of letters to our, our viewers who have contributed. And, um, you know, I'll see familiar names in there and I can't tell you how much it means to us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a guest today. Her name is Jerry Edwards. She has written Mercy Triumphs Over Judgment. Isn't that, isn't that good news? But as you read her story, you understand the truth of the title of this book. She has been through so much in her life and we've had um, guests on who have gone through great trials, but this is one really that, you know, you start when she's 12 years old, she loses her mother. It seemed to me like that might be the worst age of all to lose your mother and then one thing after another. She's continually hit, but she really believes in that triumph message of Jesus Christ. So I'm anxious for you to meet Jerry. And I've mentioned on the program before that when I go to a church supper or something, I love all the side dishes. I usually don't even pick up much of the meat, but I love side dishes. And uh, we kind of major in those around here, and we've got one today. Cream garden potatoes and peas. Oh. I can just love that. And Susan, our helper, she's been eating the potatoes. We kind of had to pull her out of it, but they're delicious, delicious. Boiled in salt water, you know, and it gives just the right, just the right taste. And um, so Stephanie's here. We're going to do that for you, show you how to make it. After I tell you, once again, we're viewer supported and we thank you wonderful viewers who keep us on the air. I think this program is so absolutely important and vital because of the guests that God sends to us and because of the unending subjects that we can bring to you and the experts that bring them. So thank you very much in advance and the you can support us with your 800 number there, your debit card, your credit card, or write to us at box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758. And I've always believed that God prompts people to give. And so if he does, I hope you will react to that prompting. That's the way I live. And sometimes I would say, oh God, that's so much, but I'm getting over that. You know, I've learned that if I do it, God's gonna come through always, always. So I hope that you will support us uh, this time. And I've joined Stephanie and, um, do you love the side dishes like I do, or do you like the meat? I like it all. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> so I had never heard of like a cream garden potato. I'm, uh -huh. I'm told it's a northern, but I'm from Indiana, uh -huh. and I still had never heard of well, this. So. Indiana, yeah, Susan said that's right. Mm -hmm. um, but Indiana is kind of considered Midwest a little bit. Okay. It's not. Plus, we grew up on green beans and corn. That's what uh -huh. my parent, that's what my mom liked, so that's what we Did ate. they have gardens? No. One time we had a garden. <laughs> we had cans. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm let so much some, older than her. Let and me I, get some onion we, sautéing and some yes, butter, yes. okay, while, you, while we're chatting. Uh, and these are red potatoes that cut are up. already boiled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've already cooked the peas, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll you want to make the cream for So it. you'll get three steps in the recipe. Mm -hmm. We're on the third step already, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're going to saute. Because we're so efficient. So efficient. We have guests to get to. Mm hmm. Yeah, we uh, usually have to speed things up a bit. Yeah. So how's your visits to the gym going? They're going great. I I'm in, I'd like to say I'm enjoying them, but I feel good while I'm doing it. and mm. Then it all falls apart. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm pretty impressed, though, that she's going to the gym from a doctor's prescription. That's a good doctor. That is a great doctor. That is a good, well, and then I went to the radiation doctor today because, and I thought he was going to release me mm -hmm. because the surgeon released me already, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm. And oh no, he wants to see me every six months for five years. Okay. So my mom's really happy about that. Yes, because yeah. her mother's a nurse. Yeah, so I have flour, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put in here and thicken this up. 
I still will see the oncologist for 10 years, mm -hmm. but the radiation doctor said, you know, he's, you know, a, oncologist is more about the medication and mm -hmm. everything and not so much um, mm -hmm. everything else. So he wants to see me every six months so he can see me and make sure. And so yes, and, and Stephanie, I wonder how many of our viewers out there really relate to all of this. Mm -hmm. There's so much breast cancer and so we much. are so thrilled that she has come through very victoriously. So like, it's ridiculous, <laughs> really. Okay, mm -hmm. so I have two cups of milk and a cup of cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for the cream. Yeah. The doctor signed me up for a gym. I don't know why. Uh -huh. no. <laughs> I'm going to put the cream in. I'm going to crank this up. Well, I've just never heard of a doctor doing that, and I'm impressed with him. Yeah. I'm going to put salt and pepper. Well, you know, he had asked me, you know, how I was feeling, and what I was dealing with was, was some major fatigue. Mm -hmm. Like, it was ridiculous how tired I was all the time. And well, he, I exercise and, every night when I get home, and I feel great. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, help me. <laughs> and I could be her grandmother. <laughs> no, I. I'm done. <laughs> the, 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 no, the, the, no, the truth is you have to keep moving. You have to keep moving. I know that. Okay, so, so I'm just going to crank this heat up. Mm -hmm. and, I get, and then we're going to put potatoes and peas in mm -hmm. here. So it's cream, potatoes, and peas. So this will just thicken up from that flour. My mother kept moving. She would live to be 100. And she used to walk this, after she couldn't drive anymore, she'd walk this, I bet it was a mile at least, to the grocery store. And she, she criticized the people that she passed <laughs> sitting on the porch. Look at I won't so tell you. So now we know where Arthur Rippey gets it from. <laughs> I, I, I won't tell you exactly what she said, but um, she... <gasps> She criticized uh -huh. them. Okay. So it all makes sense now, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> well, okay. she didn't do exercises like I do. I do push-ups and, and sit-ups and things. But she was always out with her dog walking. Truly, if if I'm half as. I just want to be a half as good as Arthur Rippey is right now. Well, I would be good. So um, I'm working on it. I'm working on I it. I have an article upstairs. I was going to show it to Deborah Ray that if you just do ten minutes, it helps. Mm-hmm. 10 minutes. You got to get moving. You got to move. Okay, so potatoes. Now, is this supposed to be kind of cooler when you eat it? You mm. think? I don't no, know. I'm being told no. No. Okay. So let's just. Oh, that's my kind of food right there. Love it. I'm just smiling through it. <laughs> <laughs> Just smile. It could probably use a little more salt and pepper, is my uh -huh. guess, so you're going to let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. But we're going to run out of time, so okay. Here, here, here. I want to taste it. Yes, here you go. There you go. It needs to cook a little bit longer. Yeah, too. I know. It'll I thicken love it. up more. Mmm. Does it need more salt and pepper? Yes. Yes, I thought so. Mm -hmm. A bit more, and the the peas need to cook a little more. Uh, that's my kind of food, right Speed there. Speed cooking, so slow it down. If that's your kind of food, you can have the recipe for nothing. Information's coming up on your screen, and we'll get it right out to you, no charge. Um, and email's the best way to get it, but that's really looking pretty. It's really looking good. So I hope if you want this, you'll get it, and that I want you to meet my guest, uh, Jerry Edwards, an amazing, amazing story, also an amazing story of God's grace and faithfulness. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. It is my privilege to welcome Jerry Edwards to the program. We've had you booked for a while. I finally meet you. Mm -hmm. Very nice to meet you. Thank you so much. And we're going to talk about a relatively new book uh, that she has written, Mercy Triumph over judgment and your life has been so I mean you've been slapped down so many times emotionally um, the kind of slap down some people do not recuperate from yes um, I want to start with your with your childhood your mother died when you were 12 years old mm -hmm. I can't I can't comprehend that. It's like the worst age. You, yeah. You're preteen mm -hmm. and all. Um, 
Can you describe what that was like for a 12 year old? Well, I mean, my world at that time was very normal and very happy, very carefree. Um, and she died in a car accident. We would travel to um, Myrtle Beach for Easter and coming back we were in a terrible car accident and she was killed instantly. So it was one moment she was here and life was and then one moment she was gone. And my life really turned around. It was just everything changed in my life at that moment. It was very difficult. Yes, uh, all the way, well, probably still at this moment. My mom lived to be 100, and I still think wow. about her every day, mm. every day, yeah. Um, now, your father left also, didn't mm -hmm. he? Where did he go? So there was a lot of, in my family, some hidden secrets that I didn't know about. And, you know, for me, I was very carefree when my mom died. I really didn't have a worry in the world. You know, my mom was a school teacher, my dad was a butcher, a lot of innocence. And then when mom passed away, a lot of things came out of the closet, so to speak, that I didn't know about. And so my mom's side of the family didn't care for my dad, and my dad ended up leaving, taking my youngest brother and moving to Florida. So there was four of us left. We stayed in the house, and my grandparents, you know, would stay with us. And um, so there was a lot, you know, it's one thing to lose a parent, to lose your mom. But then your dad leaves and, and everything <laughs> you're familiar with, exactly, is, is just gone. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. It was too much for me, so much change. And then um, I just, you know, I mean, I kept going. I had school and things like that. But life was not the same. Kind of on automatic. I, I was yes. Kidding. Now, were you raised in the Catholic Church? Yes. Yes. At some point, I picked up that you found a, somewhat of a deeper walk yes. with the Lord. When did that happen? Uh, when I was pregnant with my oldest son. So I, I always felt, you know, the Catholic Church, I was raised in the Catholic Church. I went to parochial school. Um, and I, I always had a relationship with God, mm -hmm. you know, that innocent relationship. I see where God really chose me because I took to heart everything about the Lord, you know, mm -hmm. from the time I was young. Yeah. You know, so. Um, That's interesting. Some kids do that. Yes. At a, at a young age. They're yes. I mean, I, I would pray. I would talk to God. Um, in my house growing up, we had a window pane. And I mean, I had many conversations with God as a child. You know, he was kind of like my invisible I friend, he, you know. Uh, I think he probably heard you. Now you got married, was it a good marriage? Um, it was, I mean, we were both very broken people, um, but we were both, you know, my husband, he helped me come to know the Lord in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. And when I was pregnant with Ryan, I gave my heart to the Lord completely. I think going through so much loss and brokenness, the loss of my mom, the loss of my dad, you know, um, just childhood struggles, moving constantly. In high school, I moved three times. I was gonna have to move a fourth time. There was just so mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. change in my life. Mm -hmm. And all I really wanted was some kind of stability, you know, so. Your, your, your first child, Ryan, um, it turned out that he was gay. At what point did you learn that? Well, you know, when Ryan was little, very, very little, um, he liked playing with girls. He liked playing with Barbies. He liked playing with My Little Pony. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about when he was two years old. This wasn't something that um, was put into him. He just liked playing mm -hmm. with the girls. He was much more accepted by girls. He was not a hardcore boy that wanted to go out and conquer the world. You know, he was very sensitive. And so um, he that's just the way he was. Was there a gradual awareness on your part? And, and when you really faced it, I, I have a boy in this lifestyle. Uh, what was that like? Um, it was difficult. You it know, was indisputable. Right? I think I think that as parents, we have expectations of our children, of our lives. I have expectations of my life and what I thought it would be. 
and I have expectations of what my children's life was going to be. And the most thing, you know, the thing that we want the most for our kids is to be happy. Mm -hmm. We just want our kids to be happy, you know, and full and know who they are and complete in the Lord. And um, I think, you know, for Ryan, I'm, I may have put a lot of expectations to think that this is the way you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. but he wasn't that way. And so I had to kind of change gears with him. He wasn't your typical boy. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to play sports. It wasn't his thing. So I had to find something that he liked to do and he was good at. Now, was Matthew the second child? Matthew was the second child. How, how much difference in their ages? They're 18 months apart. And he, I'm assuming he was completely different. He was complete boy, mm -hmm. complete run in the mud, complete, mm -hmm. you know, um, loved sports and was very good at sports. Everything Matthew did, he excelled. He played basketball, he played baseball, you know, he did everything and he was good at it. And, and then you had a daughter. Yes, Rebecca. Um, so with the three of them, and you had already had a lot of turbulence in your life, and Ryan's life was full of turbulence. He made great effort. Mm -hmm. And then he'd fall back, and, the, and then yes. drugs. Yes. Drugs, find, they find their way, don't they? To, you know, um, I think... Hurting the, broken people. Yes. I think... Um, the most difficult thing for Ryan, I mean, Ryan always wanted to protect me. Ryan didn't want to ever hurt me. He didn't want me to know all the things that he was going through, all the bullying that went on in school, um, the way he was made fun of, and not just school, at church as well. You know, kids are kids. It's human nature. Mm -hmm. So his brother knew, and his brother, Matthew, often defended him which Ryan really didn't like because Ryan felt almost resentful for that. Like, this is who mm -hmm. I am. You know, you don't have to protect me. You're my younger brother. So we, we had that struggle in our house, mm -hmm. although those two were inseparable. I mean, they were brothers and they loved each other without a question. That is, um, that's that mystery of the family, isn't it? It Just, is. Yes. Um, then Matthew got into some problems yes. and, and had a, a jail sentence. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm enumerating this. Your dad, your mom died, your dad mm -hmm. left. Uh, you have a real heartbreak with right. Ryan. And you have a boy who is wayward, gone in, mm -hmm. into prison. Uh, these are big ones. Yes. They're, they're, not they're not the little, little. irritations of life. No. And, I mean, like three strikes and you're out, and we've yes. got four right now. Um, right. And we haven't finished. <laughs> so. Right, exactly. Um, the thing I noticed about your book, if you just join me, I'm talking to Jerry Edwards, and she has written Mercy Triumphs Over Judgment. And what I picked up on this, going through your book, was you get hit, and then you say, God was there, you know, he, he validated me, and then you get knocked again, and there's the human side, but then there's a part where you know that God has caused you to triumph. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is that when you go through the storms of life, and I have been through major storms, not just one storm, but a rippling effect of storms, wave after wave after wave, mm -hmm. loss, addiction. One child was in jail for two years. Um, when you go through that, I sit there and my faith tells me I become relentless. God, what are you doing? What purpose do you have in this? Because you know the beginning from the end. You know it, and you knew this was gonna happen. It's not what I wanted. I didn't have a choice, but it happened. What do I do? What do I do? And I think during this time, especially with Ryan, writing the book, it was very healing but I really had to surrender. I had to come to a place of complete surrender, surrendering all my dreams, all my expectations of my life and my children's. That is so rich, I can't tell you how And the only rich. way you can get peace is to truly surrender to Christ mm -hmm. because it's about Him. It's uh, not about me. That, that's what's so amazing about this book because you get knocked down and then, then it's full of scripture 
it's full of uh, things that are going to encourage you and then you get slapped again and mm -hmm. then uh, here comes Jesus. Um, now, Ryan died, was it from a drug? It was. A drug it was overdose. an accidental overdose That is of the epitome mm -hmm. of sorrow, I would yes. think, to lose a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's where I'll, I, I might get emotional. <sighs> that's okay. That's okay. The, the whole... I mean, that day, I think the biggest thing there is that leading up to that day, we had just spent Mother's Day together. And it was the first time we had Mother's Day together that Ryan and Matthew, Ryan, Matthew was out of jail. You kind of have a family so reunion So it was there. our first Mother's Day, our first family gathering mm -hmm. in three years. Mm -hmm. And so we had such a joyful time. And see, I know God gave me that. Yeah, I was gonna say, looking back, that was and a gift. The thing was, we were on a place of restoration and healing. And so when you think about the word restoration, you know, my interpretation of restoration is, you know, they're going to be okay. They're going to, it's going to be okay. We're going to get it together and life's going to be good. But God's interpretation of restoration was to bring him home, to, to let him go home. You, you, you kind of leave me spe speechless because I think most mothers would b agree that of all the hits you can take in life, uh, to take a child would be uh, far and above worse than yeah. anything else you could take. But your book ends on a, a very high note that you, you say it really pays to trust the Lord. Yes. E even when you're down and you can't stop the tears and did you sense a, a real special comfort mm -hmm. from the Lord after this big one? Well, you know, I, I will say that, I, and it's in the book, I talk about how angry I was. I talk about my anger in the book because I wrestled with God and I was angry. Mm -hmm. And I had that moment and I, I know several people who have kids struggling with addiction, struggling with heroin, and I understand that struggle because it's, a, it's a, a high, low, high, low from one day to the next. If the phone rings at 3 a.m., your heart stops. It's, a, it's so hard. But I, I know some people who've lost their kids to addiction, and the first thing I tell them is, it's okay to be angry. Mm -hmm. You need to be angry and you need to get it out, and it's okay. The Bible because says be angry and sin not. And so I was so angry with him. And my daughter, Rebecca, she was like my encourager. She was the epitome of faith. Her faith, the way she Praise walked God. it out, was such a blessing to me during that time because I was angry. I didn't want to deal with this. I didn't want it to be true. And then after the anger, the wrestling, and I did, it took me a good wrestle with mm -hmm. him you know, constant. The thing about wrestling with God is that you are in constant contact with Him. It's a oh, constant. Yes, you're wrestling, that's for sure. And so I was. I was leaning on Him with every minute of every day. I mm -hmm. could not do this on my own. I could not. And so in that time of wrestling, it was also a time of my will against God's. And that's when I realized it's not my will. It's your will. Your will be done. What, you know, what do you want from me? That is the moment. And that was the, that was the moment that I turned it around. And, you know, you have that fight and it's just like our flesh. We have that fight and it's the same wrestling with him. But you see, I know that Ryan is in a better place. And if you think about heaven, mm -hmm. why would I want him to come back here? Mm -hmm. You know, we're between two gardens. And he came back, he would come back to a very tortured life because if you read the book, you find out the boy was crying out to God a lot. He was in yes. such confusion. Yes. Uh, I, Jerry, we're almost out of time, but I really feel you've offered a lot of comfort to um, mothers 
who know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, they're there. Uh, those of us who don't know uh, can't understand, but I feel that you've really uh, ministered to them. And we've enumerated all the things that you had to go through beginning at the age of 12 to lose your mother. Uh, you're a trophy of the Lord's grace. Oh. And, and I, I pray that God will, will use you that no matter what happens in life, yes. you don't have to let it knock you down to the floor because right. God is there. Yes. So uh, we've had her uh, email up for quite a while if you want to order the book. Is it on Amazon? And it's on that? Amazon, yes. yes. The name of it is Mercy Triumphs Over Judgment. And it's uh, in some places it's a hard read. In other places it's absolutely triumphant. I, I've never read a book quite like it, and I, mm. I'd like to uh, commend you on that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. yes. Uh, you stay with me. have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Jerry's story reminds me of a song I used to sing. When God has not promised skies always blue, flower-strewn pathways all our lives through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. God has not promised that we would not know toil and temptation, struggle and woe. He has not told us we would not bear many a burden, many a care. But God has promised strength for the day, rest from the labor, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing kindness, undying love. Those things are promised to you, my friend. And I'm sure that Jerry's story resonated with a lot of you, that you know exactly what she has gone through. But those things we can promise, and she has lived out, that God will be with you. And eventually, you might not see it now, but eventually you will triumph over these situations when you allow God to be the leader of your life. I hope you'll do that, and I hope you'll join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.